Top five ultimate dropship techniques to maximize, seriously maximize your profits. Now, these are actually hands down the best ones, period. And how can I say that? Because I've been doing it for freaking eight years, and these are the best ones I've come across, period. Okay, you're not going to find anything better. You can go pay $300 to, uh, you know, a company for total guru help, and you're not going to learn anything better, unless it's from me. Uh, <laughs> seriously, because there's a, there's a group out there, DS, DS Domination, and they're not going to teach you these. Matter of fact, a lot of the guys that come from DS Domination come to me, and I teach them these uh, techniques. Now, I've discussed uh, three of these before on my other account on one video, but I haven't discussed all five, okay? So this is actually a really good video. You should probably watch this if you're into drop shipping because you're going to learn more here than you'll learn anywhere else, probably. Uh, technique number one, like new, new other technique. Um, the idea with this technique is you have to identify a product, a type of product that has a huge range or a significant range of price differentiation between like new and new other. Okay. For example, um, if you look up HP laser jet P two zero five five DN laser printer, you're going to see an example. With this item, you could actually make 200 profit in one sale using this technique. The concept is a psychological one. One person will look at a, the same product. Let's say, let's just call it product A. Okay, it's sitting in front of us on a table. You got two different people looking at it. One of them says it's new other. Okay, and the other one says it's like new. Now, the one that says it's like new just assumes that if it's been opened, it's not new anymore. The guy that's new other, thinks it's new other, is one that thinks, well, it hasn't really been used, or it hasn't been used at all, and it's just had the box opened. It might have been taken out, someone might have tested it at one time or something, and that's it. Now, anything past testing at one time, I would say is probably new, not new anymore, but you get the idea, okay? So, and you can do this with a lot of products, but... In this case, the guy that thinks it's like new is going to go and list it on Amazon in the like new category or on eBay in the like new category, and he's going to price it compared to those who priced in the like new category, so he's going to have a low price. But the guy who thinks it's new other, when he goes to sell it, he's going to sell it as a new other, and he's going to price it related to the new other prices, which is in some cases, a hundred, hundred and fifty, two hundred dollar difference, which means we're talking about the same theoretical printer being labeled differently in two different situations. And the way you would know if it's the same printer is by the item condition note on Amazon or on eBay, the description. And if it is the same thing, what you could do is you could sell it as new other and then go buy it from the like new guy who actually has a new other of that item and ship it to your customer and make a hundred, hundred fifty, two hundred dollars in one sale. That's technique number one. Technique number two is called the replacement technique. In this situation, what it is is you have a very popular item, um, most likely a niche item, but for some reason the manufacturer stopped producing it. Maybe they just they don't have their stuff together and are just screwed up, foobard. Maybe they just discontinued it, even though it's super popular in that realm. Who knows? They just stopped making it for some reason. Maybe they got new guys in charge who's an idiot. Who knows? Whatever the reason is, they stopped producing this one particular item that people actually like. An example of this would be um, Garrity Industries E300G flashlight. That is one of them that stopped being produced. It's a power failure flashlight. So it's a niche item. There's not very many in this in this realm. And uh, the thing is, is like people in this realm, uh, customers in this realm, are looking for this item. They're looking and looking and looking and looking. They can't ever find the damn thing. They had it before, or they heard about it. So they're frustrated. They're, they're just looking for this thing. They can't find it anywhere. They want this particular item. Actually, there's not very many made by anybody else either. 
ah, you know, they're getting frustrated. So what you do is you offer them the competitor version and you put the title something like this. Uh, you know, this is the, an example. Uh, flash, new flashlight replacing blah, blah, blah version flashlight. Or this item, this model replacing blah, blah, blah other model that's gone. Okay. And when you do this, you actually can get a sale pretty easily because they're already sick of looking. They just want something at this point. They're desperate. They're just wanting to replace the item. And they don't give a shit. They're like, oh, they're saying it's related somehow. Okay, I'll buy that one. And it could be an item that costs half as much, but they don't know it. So you charge them 30 bucks for it and you go buy it for 15 and ship it to them. Seriously, I mean, it works. It works really well. I've used this technique many times. Um, okay, that's, that's technique number two. Technique number three is hard to find trick. Often you'll find a product where all the main companies are sold out on that item, especially these super popular items, especially around Christmas or just something that's selling like berserk, okay? And you can't find it on, you can't find it on Amazon, you can't find it even on eBay, which you usually can find stuff on eBay that you don't find on Amazon, but let's just say you can't even hardly find it on eBay except for some old crusty one you don't want, right? Some used piece of junk, you want a new one. So um, what it is is you'll have these smaller companies that have websites that are selling online, and actually you're going to find this even more often now because of retarded Google changing their Google Shopping and not allowing... Uh, for free advertisements anymore because when they had free advertisements they had all manner of companies listed on their search now it's paid all you got is jackass big companies listed and you got maybe like you know five options when you used to have like 30 options okay so all those small companies are not paying for advertising so it even makes it a better technique because you might have Jerry's uh, power tools, okay? And this is actually one of the things I did it with was a power tool. I think it was a drill. I can't remember which drill it was offhand. But there was this drill that was out of stock everywhere, okay? Just fr freaking out of stock. And these construction companies want this drill because they like this drill. And um, there was this company called Utter Guys, and they had like 30 in stock. And, oh, there's another item, too, I did this with. It was a, a, a cube microwave I did it with, too. And everybody had this cube microwave out of stock. It was just out of stock. Even on eBay, you just had crusty old ones selling. Nobody wants a crusty old one. And I knew of a company called Iowa 80, iowa80.com. They sell, like, they, 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 they're sort of specialized. They sell to guys that sell, uh, that drive around semis. And they sell, like, you know add-ons accessories for your semi and they happen to have this cube microwave which worked really well for semis because it's small in this cubicle right or a cube cube shape whatever so they had like 30 in stock and nobody had this item nobody and i just kept selling it you know and, and when you're the only one that's got it what does that mean that means you could sell for a shit ton you can put it on ebay you can put it on amazon for whatever freaking price you want and you're going to sell it and it's actually available for others to buy for cheaper from Iowa 80, but nobody knows about Iowa 80. Nobody knows about other guys. They don't know about these websites. And especially these days with Google Shopping being retarded and, and having only paid search, you're not going to see them on there probably either. So it actually, uh, what is it, the find.com actually shut down. It was free, and it's just straight up shut down. Someone bought them out and shut them down. Does that make sense to you? I, don't, I think it's retarded, but maybe it's because they're like, we don't like free searches on there. So this big company is going to buy you out and shut you down. The only one that's free still that's actually big, sort of, not really, is shopwiki.com that's free. That's the only one left from to my knowledge that actually has any relevance. Um, all the other ones are gone. Bing, Bing shopping used to be free. Google shopping used to be free. There was the find.com that got bought out and shut down. And then you got shopwiki.com. Those were the only ones. Like three years ago, three, four years ago, all those were free.
Okay, so at any rate, um, you could find a lot of stuff back then. Now you can't. Now you have to look. You have to just do a standard Google search to find a lot of this stuff now. At any rate, so you got these items that nobody has in stock on eBay or Amazon. Everybody goes to Amazon. Everybody goes to eBay, right? Nobody goes to these smaller companies as much. You find it on the small company site. You go sell it for a shit ton on eBay and Amazon. You make a lot of money, and you just drop ship it from Iowa 80, other guys, whoever, to your customer. That's technique number three. I had a baby over here playing, so. <laughs> but here's some noises. Technique number four, white label trick, okay? With some items, particularly niche items, you'll find brands that are not well known. They're just not well known names. And nobody really cares either because it's a niche item. Uh, for example, there's this solar powered water fountain I used to sell. And um, there was a brand name for, I, I can't remember the brand name offhand, but there was this brand name solar powered water fountain thing, okay? And, but the name brand's not known, and no one cares about it either. So, what you can do is you can find the exact same item without the brand or with a different brand on it because it's a white label item. They just went to China, found some factory making it, stuck their damn label on it. Hey, it's our blah, 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 whatever item. And they're selling it in America for, let's say, 30 bucks. And you can go to that same factory and buy it for, you know, 14 bucks. Okay? Or some other company bought from the same factory and put their name on it, and they're selling it for only 20 bucks, and then the other company selling it for 30. So you ship the 21 to the customer who bought the 31, even though it's a different name brand. Oh no, someone's gonna get pissed off, right? No, they don't care. It's a different brand. The brand is not relevant because it's a crappy brand nobody knows. We're not talking Panasonic, we're not talking Apple, we're not talking Sony. We're talking some company you never freaking heard of and don't even care. Okay, and it's the exact same item. You see what I mean? So, and like I said, I know this this works for a fact because I did this myself, you know, so like 30 items like this. What the solar water fountain, probably more, I don't know how many I sold, 30 plus, whatever. So I sold a bunch of them like this, just drop ship them, not one customer complained because the brand name wasn't known anyway, so who cares, right? So. I think the brand name was Sunterra. I think it was. I'm just guessing. I think it was Sunterra. Uh, technique number five. Let's see. What was this? Large price spread positioning trick. Um, okay. Well, let me read it first. I don't know the decent range of pricing. Okay. Identify who is selling it for. Uh, oh, okay, 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 okay. It's these are kind of related. This is some of these techniques sort of relate to each other a little bit. This technique, large price spread positioning trick, actually kind of relates to uh, technique number one in, in a sense. It's it's playing off the price game again. In this case, though, what it is is you're selling the same exact item as somebody else, but and a lot of amateurs have no clue about this. I've even did a video on pricing where I. I actually cover this in a sense. Um, I, an example product would be the Razer Death Adder gaming mouse. Um, I've seen it sell for as high as two hundred. I've seen it sell for as low as forty dollars. Exact same freaking mouse, selling for two hundred dollars, and in other cases selling for forty. Yes, in the same freaking month on eBay. No joke. There are products like this. They'll sell for a really high. And actually, an example would be the Game Boy. If you get a certain particular version of Game Boy, it will sell for a freaking high price, okay? So the idea is to figure out um, figure out what is different about the ones selling it for a high price. Uh, are they titling it different? Are they uh, using a different picture? Are they using a different category? Or maybe it's a combination of all these things. And then notice the, 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 the methodology of the guys selling it for really cheap. Are they using a certain particular title? Are they using a certain particular you know, category or methodology of selling it? And you distance yourself from the guy selling it for cheap, make your ad to look more like the one who's selling it for a high price to distance yourself from the, these cheap asses, okay? These cheap ass sellers that don't know what the hell they're doing. And you're going after a different customer base anyways. You're going after a high quality customer. You're not going after the cheap ass customer that goes to Walmart to buy his clothes. Okay, you're going after the high quality customer. Is like, why would you buy your clothes at Walmart? You know, 
you're going after that guy. And of course, he wants the best gaming mouse in this case, and he's not going to pay 40 bucks because it'll be, is there something wrong with it? Is it a, a replica? Is there something, what, what's going on? Why is it 40? It, it's supposed to be 100, you know? So he's only going to buy the one that's 100 bucks anyways. And you're doing myself, you're doing him a service by providing that, <laughs> providing it for him so he can buy it for 100 bucks. So, yeah, so this is the idea. So then you market it in a way to where it's it's cla it's more classy. It fits that genre of how it's being marketed by the guys who are marketing for a higher price. And then you can make a lot more money doing that. Okay? So that's technique number five. I actually had six or te seven techniques, but um, I just realized I had six or seven, but I didn't write them all down. I'm trying to think what was another one. Ah... Uh, I can't remember offhand. I'd have to think for a while. But the, a lot of them are kind of related in this respect. You can actually kind of combine combine these as well. And if you think about it for a while, you might think of another technique that relates to these techniques. Because once you hear one of these techniques, you're like, oh, okay, that makes sense. See, and what you learn from like things like DS Domination and all these other guys that don't know how to freaking drop ship is it'll be like, Find a product on Amazon. It's really popular. Find out, find it on eBay. Ah, uh, is there a profit? Wow, you can make five bucks on a two hundred dollar. You see what I mean? Okay, that's how they do it. And it's not a technique. It's just retarded. I mean, anybody can do that. Anybody can look at Amazon at a product. Everybody's gonna think, okay, what's the amateur gonna do? He's gonna be like, oh, I want to sell the most popular item. Right? Okay, now, amateur's going to go a couple different directions. He's going to either go, oh, I want to sell the most popular item. And then he goes and looks on eBay and Amazon. Oh, I can make some money if I do it. But then they don't think about the fact that there's a, uh, uh, a fee for selling it. And then after they sell it, they realize they only made 5 bucks on a $200 item, right? And they thought they were going to make 25 until they saw the fees, right? Something like that. And then there's also the other guy. There's, an, there's another guy It's like this. I'm going to sell the most, the highest priced item. So he lists like couches and tables and, you know, exercise equipment. And yeah, that shit never sells. That's the thing that that guy doesn't get. That guy doesn't get the fact that that thing don't sell. And then he doesn't know how to freaking list it either. He's like, I'll put it up as good till canceled. Yeah, you're going to be sitting on that puppy for months and months. And you're gonna get, and then if you do sell it, you're like, wow, I made 20 bucks listing it for months and months. And then on eBay, you have a, a limit on how many things you can list. And you just listed a super expensive item, good till cancel, which is the worst way to list something. And you're basically sitting on it forever and you make 20 bucks in three months. I mean, you see what I'm getting at? This is how dumb this method is. So... And I, yeah, if I'm mean, sure some of you guys have probably did this. I'm just telling you, you got to really think about this stuff. You got to think about all the all the factors you want. Of course, you want a popular item, but you want a popular item that makes you a lot of money. Okay, you want a popular item that makes you a lot of money. You want to make a lot of money. You don't need to have a high price item. If you can make fifty bucks off a hundred and thirty dollar item, go for it. I mean. It's better than making 50 bucks off a $300 item unless you can sell that $300 item like crazy and you have high eBay limits, you know, or something like that. So um, this is what I'm saying. So, you know, and it might be a $20 item. You might be selling something for 20 bucks and you bought it for five. 15 bucks profit in a sale. That's perfect. And then that works really good with eBay limits. eBay limits are really shitty. 20 buck item. You made 15 bucks, you know, hey, that's better than selling a $200 item and making 15 bucks, right? You see what I mean? You got to think of all these little factors in this.